over the last few years, we have seen a rise in violent backlash against rationalism, anti-superstition, and social reform work. Such a backlash always existed, but it found a horrifying manifestation in the murder of rationalist activists, including Gauri Lankesh, Dr. Dabholkar, M.M. Kalburgi, and Comrade Pansare. As part of ongoing conversations by the Indian Cultural Forum, today we are speaking to Dr. Tejal Khanitkar. Tejal is faculty at the National Institute of Advanced Studies in Bengaluru. She is an expert on energy and climate change. Today, we'll speak to her about developing a political project of rationalism. We're speaking on the occasion of the death anniversary of Gauri Lankesh. I wanted to ask you, what do you think is so politically dangerous about Gauri Lankesh that she was murdered by the Hindu right? And not just Gauri Lankesh, what was so politically dangerous about Dabholkar, Kalburgi, Pansare? I think the murders, uh, uh, you know, very clearly are a direct brazen attack um, uh, on, um, the, on, on rationalist thought and the critique of uh, the practice of faith. So, for uh, example, for Dr. Dabulkar and the work of Anis, they were posed in direct confrontation with the peddlers of obscurantism across religions, right? Uh, uh, focusing on sometimes fatal, but the always inequitable uh, sub, uh, superstitions that are inherent to faith. Uh, Professor Kalburgi was targeted uh, seemingly I think, for his uh, direct attack on idol worship, uh, whereas both uh, Comrade Pansare and Gavi Lankesh uh, spoke about the problems of putting religion above the con uh, constitution and the values uh, enshrined in the constitution. This uh, brazen attack, I think, is indeed a cause for uh, concern. It, it marks, uh, I think, the ascendance of cultural conservatives in the political space. Uh, I mean, but, but the argument would be, did we not have the, these aspects of religious and cultural conservatives in the past? And my response would be that, of course, we did. And not just in the form of the RSS uh, or the Hindu Mahasabha or their uh, political uh, offshoots in later years after independence, uh, but also within the do dominant political establishment of an earlier era. You know, uh, inauguration of temples by uh, political leaders is unfortunately not new. You have brazen displays of Brahminism by those appointed with the task of upholding uh, the constitution. Uh, we have the famous example of uh, the first president, uh, you know, washing the feet of 200 Brahmin priests and drinking that water. So, you, unfortunately, compromises of political practice with uh, what was seen as religious sensitivity have uh, checkered India's uh, trist with secularism for a long time. And this compromise, uh, you know, from time to time with uh, religion and mostly with the dominant religion, I think has paved the way for uh, what we have now in the form of a uh, culturally conservative uh, Hindu nationalist political discourse dominating any other narrative. Right? And you have, um, uh, well, Dabulkar, uh, Dr. Dabulkar was uh, assassinated before uh, the BJP came to power in the country or in Maharashtra. But uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, for all the others and uh, all, most of the investigation in their uh, uh, murders has happened during the reign of uh, uh, this particular political party. And look at the way in which they've dragged their feet on uh, the investigation. We still don't know. Uh, nobody is still, uh, you know, there's been hardly any progress in most of these cases. Um, and so, uh, you know, what I, uh, what I want to uh, say is that this, this ascendance of the political right wing is facilitated by this uh, sort of uh, background that we have allowed elements of, uh, of uh, conservatism to uh, flourish, to fester in our society for a long time. And these compromises have been made for a long time in history. And even now we are unwilling to learn from history. The Congress Party de defends uh, Rahul Gandhi as a Janayodhari Hindu. Uh, Shashi Tharoor publicly participates in rituals and defends Hinduism, uh, making it out to be what it is not. Uh, Kejriwal takes to invoking Lord Hanuman as a response to the BJP's invocation of Lord Ram, uh, you know, uh, to in a bit to differentiate himself. So, you know, Arun Jaitley had very rightly said at that point of time that why would people pick a clone uh, when uh, a duplicate, right, when they have the original? Um, and I think that was correct, you know, not on, only I, I, do I think are these poorly thought out political tactics in the short term, but they also uh, jeopardize the long term prospects of achieving a society that is based on reason and rationality. Okay. Uh, it's a cultural conservatives, uh, you know, the gatekeepers of uh, religion and the Hindu nationalists are not uh, threatened by this particular opposition. 
they're threatened by people like Gauri Lankesh uh, and all the others who are taking forward the more radical legacy of secular thought and what it really means. Right? A confrontation of religious authority and the propagation of reason and rationality is their, uh, was their uh, program. So, so their murder marks a dangerous turn because if you actually look at uh, uh, you know, uh, the writings from an earlier time, you take, take uh, Riddles in Hinduism uh, by Dr. Ambedkar um, or his uh, the, uh, essay on the annihilation of caste, or you take Bhagat Singh's uh, staunch defense of uh, uh, atheism up until his last moment, or you take Periyar's uh, views on uh, religion and uh, God even. Uh, they, they, they were much more radical, worded much more radically, uh, and much more uh, critical of religion and faith. Uh, and nevertheless, uh, you know, uh, you don't see this kind of, while there must have been some uh, backlash even then, you don't, uh, you know, find them assassinated. And here we have, uh, you know, at the, at, the, at the beginning of the new century, you have attacks on the people who are uh, speaking of, uh, speaking in defense of scientific temper. So I think uh, we are at a crossroad uh, and we really need to think about how we, we respond to this uh, carefully. Dominant strand in Indian history, at least, you know, after, the, after independence has been, like you said, of a compromise with conservatism and with majoritarian religiosity. But um, the rationalists who were murdered, they also drew from Indian history and uh, their activism and scholarship was rooted in Indian history to a large extent. So what were those strands in Indian history that they drew from, do you think? But you have had a, a social reform uh, that, that has been, uh, you know, a part of Indian history, a part of India's freedom movement also for a long time. And it's always pitted as uh, this uh, binary, you know, social reform versus independence, and uh, which was important. But I think uh, uh, what, uh, what it did in some sense, this uh, sort of the, the fact that there was discussion and debate and discourse on social reform alongside. Also, uh, in some sense, uh, led to a more enlightened freedom movement. To whatever ex extent it was enlightened, it was it was because of the strand of social reform that came along with it. And some of it drew from uh, Indian philosophical uh, traditions of the past. Uh, you know, the, it was it was necessary to also reflect and study those. Uh, it's not, uh, and study them as part of, uh, you know, uh, 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 study them as history, factually, not in some reverence of, the, of uh, uh, you know, their uh, being part of India's ancient uh, culture or something like that, but as discussions and debates that existed in some, in, 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 at some point uh, in India's history. And then, of course, the Enlightenment uh, that uh, also was, in some sense, uh, uh, reflected in the kind of thought of the Fule, uh, Fule's, etc., right, uh, at the beginning, right, uh, uh, much before independence, before uh, the social reform movement, I mean, uh, at the, uh, let's say, at the inception of the social reform movement uh, in the country, uh, that drew from uh, the Renaissance and the Enlightenment uh, that was not necessarily, that is not today necessarily seen as organic, to Indian thought. But uh, nevertheless, it uh, had, had a very, I think, profound impact on the way in which we thought about uh, uh, taking the legacy of the freedom movement also forward. Uh, would you have had uh, participation across the lines in terms of, uh, you know, women also coming out of the house, participating in the freedom movement, etc. If the culturally conservative views of, uh, 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 of Lokman Nitilak uh, you know, had uh, uh, had uh, hold, held sway instead of the social reform, uh, the views of the social reformists uh, at that time is, of course, it's a counterfactual. You can't say one or the other, but nevertheless, I think there's been a profound influence. And I think these take from uh, some of those uh, uh, and in different ways have uh, sort of politically molded uh, some of our uh, experiences from history and Indian history uh, into their political tactics uh, for activism in our times.